to Westchester Real Estate Investors Zoom call. We got a really exciting um, uh, meetup tonight. Uh, thank you for everyone for getting on. Uh, we have a great guest speaker. He's um, uh, a CPA, real estate CPA, and he's a tax strategist. He uh, works in, helps me out with my business, uh, but he is just a very dynamic guy and he has all kinds of uh, fun, cool strategies that, you know, he's going to share with us. So don't let the term CPA scare you away. Um, it's, you're actually going to come away from this meetup tonight with a lot of values. So uh, I hope you have a pen and, and notebook out to take some notes. Um, he'll be dropping a lot of nuggets along the way. Um, before we get started, I just want to make mention that, um, you know, we are Westchester Real Estate Investors. Um, Adam, can you say hi? He is my co-host. Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. So Adam is, um, co like I said, co-host with me. And, um, you know, we, we work together and, you know, built this network. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're looking for any, uh, any needs with your, with being a realtor, um, Adam has a cool little contraption called uh, Matterport. So if you need your house scanned, if you have a house on the market, you need it scanned so that you can do some virtual showings. Look up Adam. Adam, go ahead, put your contact information in the chat so people can reach out to you. Follow him on all of his social media platforms. Um, and yeah, Adam is your guy for, um, I think he has a, you have your license in which states? Wait, sorry, say that again? You have your license, your real estate license in which states? Yeah, New York, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. There you go. Um, and, and with the Matterport, I'm happy to show anybody how to do a virtual showing. Uh, on that, and we can even do uh, their video like uh, walkthroughs, so you don't even have to necessarily do the walkthrough with people, you can kind of just send them that. So, there's a lot of really cool stuff we could do with the Matterport nowadays. Awesome, awesome! But yeah, I'll get my information into the chat for you. Too. Love the cowboy hat, perfect! Thank you, thank you very thank you much. Also, line dancing <laughs> lessons if anybody needs that. <laughs> Um, so yes, yeah, so as I said, uh, we are Westchester Real Estate Investors. For those of you who don't know and that are new, uh, we usually do a monthly mixer in person. Uh, we've been doing webinars uh, once every two weeks just to take advantage of the downtime. Nobody's really doing anything, so you might as well be learning. Um, and so we have this platform. We've been bringing, you know, some really great speakers. Um, we're going to hear from one of them tonight. Um, if you are not on uh, our uh, Facebook page, Please go there and follow us on our uh, join our group. Um, we're trying to grow that group so that we can have an online resource for you guys. So it's Westchester Real Estate Investors. Go over there now, and I will also link that in the comment box. Uh, we are also on Instagram, the same thing, Westchester Real Estate Investors. Um, and then you can follow me if you want invest with Rochelle. I'm going to put all that stuff in the comment box. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Mark Perlberg. Uh, Mark, go ahead, introduce yourself, tell us what you do. Absolutely. So I am a CPA and a real estate tax strategist. I work through with my clients throughout the year and I am involved um, in ongoing discussions throughout the year to make sure that we are doing everything possible to minimize the taxes so we can free up capital to reinvest. Uh, I also invest myself and I only work exclusively with real estate investors. So uh, other topics such as uh, how to document things, bookkeeping, uh, different ways, different banking projects and financing and deal structure all are incorporated into my consult my consulting. And then at the year end, we will do your taxes. And usually it's good news. We find out that all of our strategies will create um, value in the form of returns and additional capital to reinvest. Sorry, I was on mute. That's awesome, Mark. Thank you. Thanks. So um, let's get right into the meat of everything. Um, Mark, one of the biggest obstacles of getting started is the lack of financing. And, you know, a lot of people will say, you know, how, how do I get started if I don't have money? And, um, you know, this is a very interesting question. So can you give us some tips on how to get started with very little cash? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, feel free to ask any, um, Rochelle, if you need any clarifying questions, because I'm going to dive into a lot of stuff here. Um, first, I want to just explain some personal finance strategies that are available uh, as a recent legislation from the CARES Act. 
So if you have student loans, uh, you, the uh, and they are federal student loans, they have frozen the interest until the end of September, and they you are allowed to go into forbearance. So your your uh, your interest on your student loans is not going to grow, and you do not have to pay monthly payments. Uh, in addition, a lot of banks will allow you to forbear your payments and push your mortgage back. Uh, so instead of being 30 total years, it's 30 years and three months. Make sure you follow up and make sure that there's no balloon payment at the end of the forbearance. Uh, that's one way right there just for some personal finance hacks where you can free up a couple thousand dollars for getting your first or next deal. Also, um, because of uh, the CARES Act, your 401k or IRAs, you can withdraw without the 10% early withdrawal penalty. It still is a taxable event, but when you consider what your cash on cash return is and all the value you get for investing in real estate, if you have a deal, um, it can be a very powerful option as well. Um, and now, and, and this is only short, these are only some short-term opportunities. Um, and, I, and so I also want to show you just um, now, now to get into some investment strategies that will also provide you opportunities if you don't have a whole lot of cash. Um, one of them that is popular that may not be for everyone is house hacking. House hacking is when you either you have a property and you rent out either the, um, the rooms or the units. If you have a multi-unit, you can go in. If you really want to start off you know, frugally, you could just sign a lease on a, multi, you know, a house or an apartment with multiple rooms, get tenants, and rent out the other rooms to pay for all of your housing. You can rent them out on Airbnb, make a little more money. Um, and also, as we discussed earlier, you can own that house as well and rent out the rooms, or you can you can get a multi-unit. You can own a multi-unit, rent out the additional units. Uh, and you can even, if you can find a way to sign a master lease on a multi-unit where you sign and you're liable for the entire rent and you can rent out the other properties. So th these are, that's a, house hacking is, you know, probably for the younger generation who aren't married and with kids. And if you really got hustle, you can really make a lot of extra money to free up some, some additional savings, especially, uh, you know, some of the things you could do, you can rent each room out individually on Airbnb for, to optimize uh, the savings. Um, another thing. You might want to check your laws depending on where you live. Just, just a plug. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely want to make sure you're staying compliant. And also you want to make sure your landlord knows what you're doing because uh, there could be some issues. Uh, another thing for beginners is they will buy their first house and eventually convert it into a rental property. So if you're going to buy your first house, uh, there are several ways to do it. You can buy your first house in house hack it. Um, you can get a conventional loan with only 3% down with some, of, with some of the big banks. And um, that will allow you to right there. You can live there for with an owner occupied loan, 3% down. Um, you can, you live there for a year and then you do the same thing and you move into another property and that, that former property that you lived in is now a rental. Um, and then you, there's a lot, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I'll never have that 20% down. So there's what's called a second home mortgage. And this is great if you want to invest out of state, you want to get a beach house, you can qualify for what they call a second home or vacation mortgage. And that's only 10% down. So one of my clients is in New York City. He has family. His uh, mom and dad retired to South Carolina. So our strategy is he's going to get some. Uh, he's going to get that 10% down vacation home in South Carolina. He's going to use his family to help him out with his rentals. So now whenever he flies to South Carolina, he has the business expense for his commute to view his properties, and he has business meetings with his family. So he's able to visit his family and also save money on his taxes. And now, I, have a, I have a quick question, Mark. Sorry yep. to cut you off. Um, so you're saying your first purchase, you can get the first homeowner's purchase at 3%, and a year later, you wouldn't have an issue um, getting a second mortgage on a home with 10% down? Yeah, so the, there's a lot, of, um, a lot of people confuse that with the, um, uh, you have, so if you want to sell the property and not pay any taxes on the capital gains, you have to stay there for two years. But to qualify okay. for the owner-occupied mortgage, you have to show that you intend to stay there for at least a year. Okay, thank you. A, a lot of people confuse that. But, you know, the, the, another strategy, which um, to your point, is the live and flip strategy where you live in a property for two years, 
force appreciation, add value, and then you sell it after two years and then you pay zero uh, tax on the gain. So that's another really cool strategy if you're a DIY type person and then you move every two years. Mark, are you familiar with the Sony Ma program? I uh, haven't heard of it. So, so like the, we had the FHA loans where you can have 3.5% down uh, for your first time home. But New York State also has the Sony Ma program, which lets you get an, uh, another home for 3% down. So you can basically get your first two properties for 3% and 3.5%. Oh, that's really great. So I'm going to, you know, I'm excited to hear about that because, you know, I'll be telling that to a lot of my clients in New York as well. Um, there's also what's called a professional loan. And um, that will allow you to purchase a property with zero money down and zero PMI. Uh, and, but you only, it's only for first time home buyers. And that's for doctors, nurses, CPAs, attorneys, veterans, pharmacists, pilots, and dentists. Um, so that might be an option for some people looking to buy the first property as well. Hey, Mark, the, um, uh, the 10%, so, the second home yeah. property. Um, do you have to live there or can mm -hmm. you use that as a, could it be a rental mm -hmm. as a second right. home for the 10% down? Right. So absolutely. So um, you, the, here's where you, you get, a, so my clients are just buying it and renting it out right away on Airbnb. Um, you, what the, your intention has to be is that this is a second home vacation property that you will use on your, on your leisure. So you don't have to live there full time. You know, in the as you can see in the name, but most of my clients. So even if it's a second home, there's no rule that you can't rent that out on a, as an Airbnb um, whenever you're not there. And also, there's there's no restrictions on your abilities to uh, to rent it out on a more uh, long term basis after you know after you've acquired it for some time. And what's the the rule? It has to be out of state. Uh, so I haven't heard of anything saying it has to be out of state. You should really uh, talk to a bank and get qualified for it when you're ready to start searching. But I've never heard of any reason why you can't get a second home in another part of the same state. I've never heard of a, a, of a bank, but because I'm not a lender, I can't really um, attest to, you know, what, what those banks will say and if every bank has the same policies. When I purchased the house at the Catskill, so I live in Westchester County, um, mm -hmm. there was no way that I could, you know, purchase that at, like with a first time homeowners, like because the bank considered that to be too far away from my, my dwelling. So where mm -hmm. I, you know, my home address. So it was considered like a vacation, like a vacation home or a second home. So there's probably, the bank probably has a mileage restriction or something like that. You just may want to just ask them about it. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, my clients are doing it. So it's just something to think about as a, a nice other way to, uh, you know, to think about building out your portfolio and especially, you know, where you guys are, uh, New York is a pretty expensive place. So you can have, uh, you know, if you're thinking about investing in a place that you're interested in, um, maybe getting a beach house or something else. Um, it's a, I think it's a great opportunity. Um, some other strategies that, if you're interested in not putting any money into certain deals, um, you might want to you might want to consider. Um, sorry, I want to backtrack really quick. There's also the VA loan, which I'm sure you guys are aware of. As a program where you can get an owner occupied loan with zero money down, but it's based on only agricultural regions that may not work for you. There's also something called NACA. NACA and they will assist you. Um, you go through their program on personal financing. And they'll assist you in purchasing a, a home that you'll live in, um, but they aren't so investor friendly. So um, after that one purchase, you'll probably have to move on to other forms of financing. Um, so those are just some ways, some creative ways to get into your, you know, to, to your first purchase uh, of a place that you can live in, um, and then. There are other ways that you can invest. Um, you can also, you know, with, with some good negotiation, there's a owner finance and subject to um, owner financing was when the, the, usually you'll find older folks who are, you know, on their way out. They'll be open to negotiating 
um, becoming the bank and doing an installment sale where you'll pay them instead of the bank. And they may be open to a zero money or low money down as well as subject to will be when you take over someone else's mortgage and you might be paying a little extra for that. Um, and then there are um, just other investment strategies that don't require very much money at all. Like, so there is wholesaling. Uh, I'm not sure how versed you guys are in all of these strategies. So I'll just give a brief description. Wholesaling is when you find an off market property and you, they agree to sell you it at a certain price, you get it under contract, and then you sell that property at a greater price, you put it on market to, to an outside investor and you make that the difference between what you have under contract and what that other uh, purchaser agrees to buy it for is your profit. And a little tip is if you, do, if you own that contract within your Roth IRA, none of it will be taxed. Um, and then another popular method of investing that's growing is rental arbitrage, where you just sign the lease on a deal. You sign the lease on, a, um, on an apartment, it could be a condo, whatever. And then you turn around and you furnish it usually and rent it out at a profit, maybe through Airbnb, VRBO. And you, know, you develop the systems, have someone to clean in and, and, and to manage it and to price it. And then you can get a pretty good profit and get your return you know, the money that you invest just in the furniture and down payment, you can get that back in a few months and then negotiate another deal. And the wonderful thing about the, uh, the rental arbitrage is you can still get that passive income treatment on your taxes, uh, which we all love as real estate investors. You know, um, and I guess, you know, feel free if you guys have any questions, I'm just going to keep on moving along some of these ideas. Um, and another thing just to point out uh, is also partnering, right? So, if you have a lot of hustle, uh, maybe you have some skills that you can bring to the table. You want you find someone to partner with. There's an, you know, we have people who are ready to retire and maybe don't have the time and have cash and want to be cash partners and could really appreciate, you know, the efforts you have and the the education and, and and would be willing to partner if you're willing to find the property at the right price and maybe put some uh, some eligible grease into this property and help manage it. Awesome. Sounds great. What, it, um, what do you say to those people who ask um, if you can get in, started in real estate with zero money? So, um, you know, and, and, and we've had this conversation before, but I think that, you know, uh, you see these gurus, gurus that say, you know, get started in real estate with, with zero, with no cash, you know, what, what do you say? Because I, I personally think that that's impossible. I think that you can get creative, but there is going to be a cost of some sort. Um, you know, so what do you say to those people? Well, I, th I think that if you have absolutely no money to your name, you know, there's, <laughs> you might have bigger problems to address. Yep. Uh, to make, and let's you know, talk about that. Let's talk about that because, you know, there are some people yeah. that think that, you know, it's just as easy as that, but like, you know, some of some tips are, you know, working on your credit. You need to have good credit guys, you know, like Absolutely. you can't just, you know, live, live like all caution to the wind and then expect, you know, a, a windfall of, of great luck. So you kind of have to pull yourself together. Yeah, absolutely. I a hundred percent agree with you. And just for yeah. managing your own, you know, who knows what's going to come at you if your car's going to die or, or, you know, some sorts of emergencies, medical emergencies, you really, I think you should prioritize that. Um, but I'm also a believer. And I think anything poss is possible in this world. So maybe, you know, if you don't have a whole lot of money, you know, there's a, there are, you know, you really, sh especially as investors, we really got to show that we can take care of our own personal finances. Yep. And, and, and maybe just uh, you know, as a follow up to that, uh, you know, when I got started in real estate investing, I was that person, you know, broke, bust and disgusted, you know, and single mom at the time, it was, it was tough. Um, but you know how I started out was I started w working on myself, um, first of all, and then, you know, what evaluating what skill set that I had, you know, I've been working in real estate development for my whole career. Um, so I did have prior knowledge of real estate, you know, real estate development, construction, management, all that stuff. So, you know, I started uh, reading, um, started cleaning up my, you know, 
like I went through a divorce. So I had a lot of stuff that I needed to get through. Uh, once I, you know, started going through that, I, you know, um, I started looking up people on bigger pockets, um, you know, and then in my network who I found out was a real estate investor and I started offering to help them, you know, on certain things in exchange for knowledge. Um, and so then knowledge, you know, it ended up turning into, small, small slivers of equity, you know, like, and I'm talking very, very small, but that's how I got started, you know, and you do have to participate in your own rescue. You absolutely have to participate. So, you know, if, if you're, if you're um, like me, um, you know, 12 years ago, then, you know, there is definitely hope, but you definitely have to put the effort and the work into it. And there's going to be a lot of sweat equity um, if you don't have your own cash to come bring to the table. Yeah. And, and, you know, my practice really started because I really wanted to invest and I was broke. And uh, so, you know, I started calling other investors, seeing how I could help them out. Yep. And, um, you know, no one wanted anything to do with me until I mentioned that I happened to be a, an accountant and a CPA. And they asked me what I could do to help them save their money on, on their taxes. I didn't know at the time, but I was thinking, you know, there's, there might be a need here. And, um, you know, being around them gave me all sorts of great ideas to, you know, to, to be where I am and build my practice. So, yep, you know, yep. French to eat, you know. says pay to play or seek to mm -hmm. serve. I love that. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, investing is obviously risky business. So how do I manage my fear uh, and move forward towards my goals? Right. So I think a lot of people are afraid of losing money, but I think we should also consider what is the loss of opportunity if we don't do anything right now. Mm -hmm. Right. So if we let all these deals pass us by and we never get our feet wet, um, we're just going to miss out and we're going to continue with our jobs and have one source of income. And, uh, well, you know, you don't want to go through your rest of your life wondering what could be. Um, so, and so here are some practical ways that you can hedge in, uh, against risks and also evaluate them. First, obviously, doing things like this, getting an education, educating yourself when you're eating lunch at your office, pop in the headphones and listen to bigger pockets and webinars um, and audio books uh, and, and in your car. Uh, and also look at the big picture here. Right. So think about, you know, talk to other people, have them and analyze your deal. And there's always going to be some sort of risk. But think about worst case scenarios, you know, and if this is a smaller deal, you wind up losing a couple of dollars. Is this going to be the end of it? Uh, usually it won't. Um, and um, think about it. A lot of times uh, a, a deal that maybe seems to be going south in the long run is even going to be negative because, you know, let's say you own a rental property and your cash flow negative in your first year. Well, you might have some tax write offs creating refunds. You're still paying down equity. And then you're still going to, over time, that property will appreciate, rents will increase. And it could be that over the course of 30 years, if you're in the long run, in playing the long game, uh, that this will, will be profitable. And um, also just think about that non-quantifiable factor once you run all your numbers and think about how much you can make or lose that, you know, this is just your first deal. And if you're serious and you really want to make a career out of this, or at least build wealth through this, um, think about everything you'll learn and be able to apply to your next deal and the credibility you'll have with other people in your network. Mm -hmm. And, you know, think, think about it. If you do, it, you know, hopefully you'll profit and we plan to profit, but if it's not the most profitable, this is also tuition that we'll be paying to get into the game of real estate. And, uh, so, I, you know, I, I really think that it's all about just, you know, just thinking about the big picture here and looking at your, if it's your first deal, consider this one of many deals in the grand scheme of things. And you just got to get the ball rolling, get started and doing everything you can do um, to make it happen. Absolutely. Um, also another, another good point is to, uh, you know, network in your, in your go to, go to your local RIAs, go to your, your local meetups, um, guys, we don't, we don't sell, we don't pitch in this group. There's over a mm -hmm. thousand members, um, on this platform. And I pretty much have met every single person you could possibly want to know, um, in the real estate world. And so 
you know, with, with this meetup. So I'm just encouraging you to find people who align with your interests, part, uh, align with your, your goals um, and your values and, you know, build relationships because relationship, this is a relationship business. Um, you know, there's, if, if you can, if you can build those relationships, then with the education uh, um, that Mark was talking about, you can certainly form, you know, a partnership um, and maybe with someone who is a little bit further down the road than you are. And I will say that every step of the way in real estate investing, that is what I've done. I've always partnered with people who are further down the road of do, doing exactly what I wanted to do. So find those relation, you know, find those people, build those relationships and educate yourself. Yeah. Uh, and another thing that um, just to address, I know some people express concern in the coronavirus. Um, and uh, again, if you can look at the big picture uh, right now, you, you might be able to get a really good deal and uh, prices have dropped a little bit, dropped off a little bit because of the fear of the coronavirus and interest rates are historically low. And then if we go back to looking at the big picture, if you're own this property over 30 years, do you think that people are still going to be stressing out about coronavirus in one year, two years, 10 years from now. So if we're playing the long game here, um, it, you know, think about that. Think about you know, all these different factors, how they're going to play come into effect um, over the course of your investing career. Sure. Um, so, you know, interesting, just to go back to the first question, um, you know, with, with the, uh, the, the money and, and, and just as kind of a, an offshoot of that question, you know, obviously New York is the majority of the people on here are from New York and it's very difficult to get started in real estate because of the high barrier to entry. Um, it's extremely, you know, the, the, the prices of property are, you know, at the peak right now. So, you know, what do you say to people who are uh, maybe a little fearful of looking outside of the New York market? Um, and, and, you know, can you share, you know, maybe some experiences that you've had with um, investors as your clients um, that have made that, um, that jump? Yeah, absolutely. So um, a lot of my clients invest out of state. And um, they, they, uh, they do plenty of research. They'll visit the places they're investing in. They have a refined business model and they've done everything they can. You know, maybe they start off with one small condo to just get a feel for the market. But uh, my clients are, you know, I have clients who maybe have rentals across three different states. And um, it works because they do, you know, even though you're not there all the time, when you think about rental, when building wealth, you're going to have to delegate responsibilities anyways. You know, you're not going to be available to fix every pipe as, you, as your portfolio grows out anyway. So you can't always be there. Um, but, and you can learn so much by, you know, spending some, dedicating some time if you want to visit. And also you can just learn so much by doing online research in, in this modern day of technology. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So um, I have money, but I don't have experience or deal flow. How do I compensate for this? Yeah. So I, you know, I think that um, one of the great ways to overcome all of your advantages is always going to be education again. And this can help you with making these decisions and feeling more confident and maybe finding ways to find deals. But uh, also, you, you may not have a lot of time and you may also want to partner with someone else who does have these attributes, who does have the deal flow. So maybe there's someone who has wholesaling experience, right? Or someone who's willing to make the cold calls and network and knock on the doors and find the deals. Um, so partnering, being a cash partner is fantastic. You guys can share ideas and learn from each other and you can learn from someone with a little more experience. Find someone who, who really has that drive and that hustle and integrity you can trust a uh, little tax tip is you can invest either in the equity of a deal or you can be a lender through your Roth IRA to grow your retirement funds tax free um, you know and keep on going to the meetups you know and, and if you know anybody who's pulling people together and syndicating deals looking for cash partners who happens to be in meetups you know they can be great people <laughs> to team up with and uh, just keep on meeting people and finding ways, looking for openings. 
And um, just another tax tip is if you have passive income and you have a good tax account, you can use real estate to create, even if it's cash flow positive, we can create passive losses um, on your tax returns and that will create refunds and free up additional capital to reinvest. So there are plenty of opportunities. That's awesome. That's great, great, uh, great stuff, Mark. So how can people get in touch with you? Absolutely. So um, my email address is uh, mark at markperlbergcpa.com. I'm going to type that in the chat. Yeah, that would be great. Thanks. And also follow me on uh, Facebook. Um, you've probably seen me on the Facebook chat in the West, Westchester um, real estate uh, forum. And if it, I, I, you know, it's worth following me there because I'll invite you if you follow me to all my webinars. I try to do a webinar uh, once a month and you know, I'll put a lot of planning and you can watch my prior webinars. They're all posted. And if you go to the event page, you can watch recorded streams. Uh, and I'll do a webinar on different specific topics and time, uh, kinds of investing. And I really try to, uh, to compress it down and provide as much value in as little time as possible. They put some charts in to really help people out with understanding um, tax strategies and, and, and marrying that with the business strategy. Awesome. And also, uh, and it just send me an email if you want to know what I'm up to because I uh, I'll also, if you're on my mailing list, I'll send you updates on the tax code and invitations as well to other webinars and whatnot. Good stuff, good stuff. So we're gonna, we're gonna open this up to some Q and A's. We have 41 people on, guys, this is awesome. You know, every, every, every two weeks that we do this, we're growing bigger and bigger. Um, as I said, uh, we are a free uh, resource and we don't charge for our webinars, we bring on, uh, you know, some incredible talent and, and, and just knowledge to share with you. Um, so you, the best thing you can do to give back um, to those that, that uh, put this, you know, put the effort into bringing this to you is to be supportive and be on, be on and listen, um, you know, because it's just going to help benefit you guys. Um, and so thank you to everyone for being on. So we're going to open up for Q and A. Um, please go ahead. You can type your comments in the chat. Um, or you can unmute yourself and go ahead and ask more questions. Bill, awesome. I think your hand is raised. <laughs> I raised my hand. I'm getting in line. <laughs> How's it going, Bill? I have a couple of questions for you. You mentioned uh, two different things dealing with the Roth IRA. One was loans and one was buying a property in it. Uh, to do that, I know you need a self-directed Roth, I believe. Mark? Correct. You will need a self-directed uh, IRA to do that. Who sets those up? Do you know a place that handles those reasonably well? For Yes. Um, so the one that uh, there are several uh, different providers and some uh, have different, um, uh, some have different uh, restrictions on what you can do with it. Uh, so you got to find one that is flexible with what you're looking to do. And um and if you shoot me an email, I can send you a, a, refer, a referral to someone who does it. Um, and that company's name is Rocket Dollar. And they specialize, well, I wouldn't say they specialize, but I met them at a real estate conference and I called them to talk about what I could do with a Roth. And they, the law allows your Roth to lend to your company? So there are restrictions on who you can lend with. You can't borrow from yourself or certain family members. Can my um, LLC borrow from me? Say that again. Can my LLC borrow from me personally? I don't think so. I think that would be labeled a sham transaction, uh, but I haven't encountered that question before. But um, being, is it a flow? Do you, what kind of LLC is it? A flow through entity? I have two different LLCs. Each of them, each of them uh, are holding properties, rental units. Yeah, you're, you're probably not going to be able to do that. No. But you can lend to what you can do. You can find someone who you who you like and trust. If you're looking to 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 make that profit as a lender, you know, find someone. You can be a hard money lender out of your Roth for maybe a house flipper, and you can get a really nice return. Uh, look at what these hard money lenders are doing, and yeah, they're they're getting phenomenal returns. Um, now, as far as buying in a Roth IRA, self-directed Roth IRA, um, if I buy in that. I have to hold it in my name or the Roth's name, or I can form an LLC for that. 
Yeah, that's a great question. And, and a lot of people, um, I really think that owning a property within a Roth IRA in New York can be fantastic because, well, let me go back to answer your question before I go out, go off on a tangent. Um, so the Roth IRA will own the property and will be liable for the mortgage and all of that. And you can't personally manage it. Uh, you're going to have limited ability to manage property and influence on this property if it's owned by your Roth. You really have to have that separation. But here's a cool thing about it. You can still finance uh, property within your Roth. You may need more down because it's not a person. It's a Roth IRA. But um, as you pay off the mortgage in that property, um, what's going to happen is you're going to have unrelated debt finance income, which is taxable. So the, the portion that's financed you know, that isn't owned by a Roth that is leveraged is taxable. But as you pay off the mortgage over time, pretty soon your Roth owns the entire property and there's no mortgage on it. So then when you sell it in an appreciating market, like California, New York, right. all that capital gain after uh, gaining value over year after year is going to be completely tax free. We can talk about potentially as a long term passive passive strategy, sit back, let someone else look at it. In 30 years, you might be looking at, who knows, half a million or a couple of million tax-free capital gain. Now, in, in real life terms, to do this in a Roth, the Roth IRA would need to have already been established with serious money because- right. You're gonna need a decent amount. The down payment, um, and costs, the attorney's fees, everything, everything to get the deal going would have to be there. And the deal would have to be cash flowing well enough to carry the mortgage because I'm limited to whatever it is, six grand or so that I can put in to the Roth in a given year. I can't just pay for anything. Right. However, you can do what is a Roth IRA rollover. So you can roll over funds from other retirement accounts into your Roth IRA. So if you have a solo 401k, a 401k, you can actually roll that into your Roth IRA it'll be a taxable event. You'll have to pay taxes on whatever your, um, whatever the taxes are that are being deferred in your 401k, but you can roll over an unlimited amount into your Roth. And now that's great if you have a lot of losses in a year, if you have a good tax strategy and maybe you know, you're making below standard deduction, you could potentially roll it into your Roth and never pay taxes on it up to first 12 or $24,000. I'm not in that position, but this is a good year to do it with all the unemployment and all the CARES Act stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You could take it out. You don't have to pay the 10% early withdrawal fee, and then you can grow it tax-free within the Roth instead of, you know, it, it, so whatever you're doing with your, um, yeah. however it's growing now. So we have a question here from uh, Lee. Do you need a proof of funds for wholesaling? So wholesaling is like, you really don't need much at all. I mean, you just got to find someone who's willing to, to sell you this property at a certain price and get it under contract. And that contract just has to be assignable. So that you, so it says that you can assign this and give the privilege to purchase it at this price to someone else. I mean, you can be homeless and still wholesale. Like it's, um, it's probably the, that has the lowest barrier of entry but it also takes a lot of work and hustle and you're giving away the best deals because wholesalers usually give the deals away to other investors. I just want to say if you're wholesale wholesaling in the state of New York, you need to be careful because um, you need to have proper language in those contracts to protect you. Carl, if you'll put your, your information in the chat box, Carl is a real estate attorney. Um, highly recommend using him. Um, he's, He's great. So go ahead, Carl. And uh, I saw you were on here. So drop your contact information in the chat box. The next question we have here is from um, Henderson. I'm brand new and I'm looking for my first deal with little capital to start. I analyze deal as instructed on bigger pockets, but I'm deathly afraid to make an offer in the event that it's accepted and I don't have the funds. Would you recommend making an offer and worrying about the finding the finance later? So yeah. I think that you should first talk to a bank and get qualified, see what you can qualify for if you're looking to do it by yourself. Or maybe if you want to have a little bit more breathing room and cushioning, find someone else who's willing to partner with you and you together can get qualified for a partner, you know, for a joint ventureship on your first investment. That's yes. some and ideas. Just to follow up to that, um, you should absolutely make sure your financing is in place before you start making offers. Um, and if you need a contact information for 
um, uh, hard money lenders um, that are still lending even during this time, uh, definitely reach out to me and I can hook you up with someone that we recommend from our group. Um, and then the next question is, hello everyone, tax question. Uh, if I do a cash out refi on the current on a current investment property property A and take some of those funds twenty thousand to pay off back taxes on a newly acquired rental property property B, are the tax implications on that move? I'm gonna have to read that question. I'm sorry. Um, okay. I do you mind just emailing it? I I might have missed some of what you said. Um, but when you do a cash out refi, when you take the money out, that's not a taxable event. And the interest that you pay um, from borrowing when you when you take the money out is a tax deduct is tax deductible when you use it for a business purpose. Uh, I'm sorry. I I'm, I just, I'd like for you to if you could email me that question. Um, I, I I would just like to read it. And there's there's all this stuff going around. Um, yeah. Um. Whoever whoever um whoever sent that question, go ahead email Mark and he'll respond yeah. to you. Sorry about that. Um, all right, Carl, thanks. You put that in there. Um, Henderson, you need to uh, send also, me I'm gonna, email um, for Brad. some of the topics that we discussed. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm going to put some book recommendations on some of these topics we discussed. At, um, I'll put it in the Facebook forum. Okay. And um, we will just, I just want to throw that out there. People look at Okay, somebody said, please discuss business business credit. Business credit, right. So business credit, um, if you have an LLC, you can build credit for that LLC. And that may give you the opportunity to purchase property that's completely owned within the LLC or, or whatever entity that you have. Um, but there's also um, another strategy is once you have a, a successful track record, is you can qualify for a commercial line of credit, which is, can be wonderful because then a bank will just allow you to have access to cash. I was just talking to a bank about this. Uh, they were offering commercial lines of credit of five, at 5%, and it gave the, uh, the investor who had a little more experience and credibility um, to, uh, to make cash offers on properties without having to go through the financing properties, and it allows you to close on properties faster, cheaper, um, and you can usually get a better deal with uh, cash offers. Awesome. Um, Jose said, do you recommend getting an LLC to wholesale? To hold what? Do you recommend getting an LLC to wholesale? To wholesale properties. To wholesale? Yeah. You know, I that that's something that I would probably defer to an attorney yeah. um to see because that's really a liability question but I'll, i wouldn't if someone told me they were getting an llc to do it i think that that sounds like a wonderful idea because that creates separation between you and uh and the person you're doing business with so um you know i here's when i get to say i'm not an attorney so that gets me off the hook, but I don't see why not, but I can't give legal, legal advice. You know, I can't get out of the, I'm not a CPA when people are asked accounting and tax advice, but I can say I'm not an attorney, but you know, it doesn't sound like a bad idea, but talk to, um, we talk do to have Carl. Talk to so, Carl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I'm going to say, if you're buying a property, you'd put it in an LLC. Um, but yeah, I'll let you, let you Actually, I'll confirm that. Short answer is yes. <laughs> I'm going to have to refine my answer, actually, from a tax perspective. Um, you may be able to see the benefit of the S-Corp tax election. You're doing a lot of wholesales because you will be getting hit with the self-employment tax. So, um, therefore, if you create an entity that chooses the S-Corp tax election, you can actually save a lot of money in taxes if you're going to do a lot of these. Um, S corps can be a little tricky to set up and have administrative costs to, to maintain. So talk to your tax professional, but there are tax saving uh, opportunities if you create an entity and you plan proactively. Um, there, Marlon Brown said, should you start the LLC even if you have not started selling anything yet? You know, it's, 
I don't see it as, as it being a bad idea because um, you never know when something's going to land in your lap. Okay. Couldn't Is there hurt, any tax but again, I'm not that? an attorney. <laughs> Is there any tax advantages to that? Uh, a lot of the LLC questions, um, pardon me. Uh, so, well, you know, the tax advantages are really, um, so the LLC, um, it depends on um, what type of deals we're talking about here. So if we're doing rental properties, we're typically going to be doing a flow through entity, which is defaulted. Um, so whether or not you own a rental within an LLC will not impact your taxes. Um, we see the LLC um, having an impact on your taxes when we typically, uh, when we are doing wholesales, flips, and sometimes when we are worrying about self-employment relating to short-term rentals, if it creates a self-employment issue. But from long-term buy and holds, LLCs helps you out with liability protection. So Scott says, hey guys, new investor and agent here. How the heck do you make profits on rental properties in New York? <laughs> you don't. No. That's short answer. Well, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, you know, I, I have clients in New York who are invest, investing elsewhere, but you know, there, you know, there are ways, uh, maybe if you can buy something and renovate it, you can rent by the room to optimize the amount of rent coming into the property. Uh, that might be an idea or, you know, the Airbnb short-term rentals might be more profitable or if you can find something under market, um, but, but I know it's hard. I know it's hard. And that's why we were talking about, you know, venturing out of your market as well. You certainly can find good deals. Um, you know, many people are doing it, but, um, uh, you know, you I'm speak, of the belief that speak to Becky, uh, Becky Nova. She's in the group. She, Mark, she, yeah. she invests in, uh, in Yonkers and I think she cash flows, um, nicely. So you can reach out to her. Um, Mark, I have a quick question. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I mean, I'm sure it varies on the price of the property, but um, what are what are like the average holding costs on like a fix and flip, and, and like categories to look look towards? Are you talking in general or an? In general, or say maybe a um a three hundred thousand dollar flip, uh, you purchase for three hundred. You know, what are like typical holding costs to look look forward to? So you want to look at your taxes. You want to look at like all your monthly expenses, your bills. So it'd be, um, you know, your electrical bill, your heating bill, your water bill, um, trash bill, uh, <coughs> you know, any of your rehab costs, the cost for your money, um, whether, you know, interest, if you're doing a hard money loan. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to be looking at those types of costs. Um, and then, you know, any type of permits that you need, you need to take that into consideration. Um, Bill, did I miss anything? Uh, insurance is a big one. Sure. Taxes is a big one. The yeah. loan, if you have one, is a big one. Uh, those are your three big, big ones. And then construction, if you're doing any, that's a big one. Uh, it's expensive. Uh, you better be prepared to hit the ground running because time is expensive. If you uh, if you backtrack all those expenses and mark them out to the, per day, it could be a hundred dollars a day in some cases. Could be yeah, more. And here's something. Here's another challenge, and that's why, from a tax perspective, flipping is not the greatest. Uh, Uncle Sam is not so kind to flipping because as you're accumulating all these costs and expenses, they're all getting capitalized into the value of the property that you're creating. So if you finish the year and you put in maybe half a million dollars in 2019 to creating this property, you're gonna flip, you're gonna have very little write-offs associated with this activity because it's all gonna be capitalized into the price of the house, into the inventory of what you're gonna sell. So it's, um, from a tax perspective, it's, it's also a, it's a pricey endeavor, but I'm also seeing great rates available um, yeah. for, from lenders to do this. Yeah. My strategy, my strategy is to buy a house that's a flip candidate, but I, I rehab it like a flip and then I rent it so that I'm getting in, I'm buying low, I'm forcing some appreciation into the property by rehabbing it. Then I get tenants into it and then I refinance it at that point. Right. And what do you think your average, like typical return Wonderful on the investment strategy. is? How many years? 
Well, I don't, I, I, I borrow for 15 years, so I'm not in a hurry oh. to pull it out. I'm worried about cash flow. And okay. I'm not doing it currently in Westchester. I'm doing it in Orange County and Dutchess County. And in Orange County and Dutchess County, I can get to one and a half to 2% properties. One, here's an idea for you. If you are, um, if you're interested in flipping is if you could present, put, uh, sorry, possibly present the um, op uh, a lease option to the purchaser. Uh, that turns you into a landlord for uh, a year and after, and you can give them some of those payments paid towards the down payment of the property. And once you've been a landlord for the year and then you sell it, then you're going to eliminate the self-employment tax on the property. And you're going to be taxed at a long-term capital gains rate instead of your margin of the tax bracket. Okay, thank you. Jackie says, I'm renting out the apartment in my two-family home, which is also my residence. This is my first year collecting rental income. What kind of tax issues can I expect from that? They are sending their rent directly to my personal checking. Right. So this is, uh, it, the rent is taxable and your write-offs are going to be, what you're going to do is you're going to look at all of the um, expenses associated with the property. You, you, at this point, some of these estimations are going to require a, you know, someone who's a little more experienced, but you're going to have to, um, based on the square footage proportion of what someone is renting, um, that'll, allow, that'll create a lot of nice deductions. Now you can deduct a portion of your internet and your taxes will go on your Schedule E, so it's not limited. Um, so your state taxes are now not limited by $10,000 it's a business expense, the amount is located to be um, business property. Um, so think about all the overhead to maintain the property and you can allocate that out um, as an expense against it. And then the incoming re rent is revenue that should be taxable. Okay. Um, Jose said, I had an LLC formed created with two other individuals in which I no longer work with. Nothing is actually being done under that LLC. Do I simply reach out to the state to close it? Can I be affected if I don't reach out and leave it alone? I'm a newbie. Right. Well, um, I'm thinking one, maybe one idea is to change the articles of organization. So um, if you still want an LLC, you just take your two partners out and now you have an LLC that you can you know, apply towards future endeavors. And um, I change the name to, an, to that LLC, Mark? Pardon me, say that again. Would I be able to change that name? Yeah, you, sh you can change the names of LLCs as well. Okay, thank you. Um, so I think that's all for questions. If anyone wants to unmute and ask anything, feel free to do so. I have a question. Uh, it could either be for Mark or Rachel. Um, you know, you mentioned like, you know, trading like your time for like education and you mentioned like the bigger pockets, like what were ways that, you know, you networked on bigger pockets and what did you, you know, like say to people who you wanted to work with or learn from? So for me personally, my first time being involved in real estate was, um, there was a, there was like a local leader of um, invest, like who had her own meetup where I live. And uh, this was in, Char in Charlotte, North Carolina, although I'm from New York. Um, and um, she encouraged me because I, I was kind of stuck at a wall where I had no money to get in the game. And she's like, well, why don't you just start consulting? You're an accountant and start helping people out with their taxes and, and accounting. And I was like, all right. And she had me come over and help her out with some of her stuff. And then I reached out to some other local investors and I helped them out. So that was what happened for me. But listen, you look like a healthy guy. You know, say, hey, I'll help you paint. Talk to me while I help you paint. You know, just, just I think if you have a good attitude and you're willing to just put effort in, um, you don't need any special skills. You don't have to be an accountant, but uh, people like you have a good attitude and say, hey, can I help you out in any way? Um, there's so much that you can do with, with, with the right attitude. Yeah, I think I actually like eventually want to get into syndication. I know I mentioned that to you before, Rachel. Um, and I'm actually like finishing up my accounting degree now. Um, but, you know, yeah, so I think that, you know, everybody has value to add and, you know, I think that 
one of the biggest mistakes that we can Definitely. we can um you know make is to assume that we don't like you know a lot of people say oh i'm new what do i know well you actually do know something and you know you are an expert at something and and, and it's just about identifying what that is and what value you can actually bring to someone else and so what i suggest is you know find someone who is doing what you want to do you know and and first you know you have to find that like don't just randomly throw your net out there because if you if you're general if you're general i would say be specific because if you're general you're going to get general back so be very specific in who you align yourself with and then find listen have conversations with them listen to what they're saying you know if they're saying like my gosh like i am like you know i i have like so much bookkeeping that I, you know, I'm just using this for an example, or, you know, man, I'd like to, you know, ramp up my marketing efforts or what, like, I would hear that. And I would be like, wait, I can do that for them. You know? So like, I, I would do whatever it was that they needed and make myself a value and in exchange, get information, you know, what is it that you're doing? Can you teach me what you're doing? And of course they're going to teach you, you're, you're adding value to them. So, you know, look at what you have as a currency right now. You know, if you have time and you have skill set, that is like money, it's a currency. And so you're going to trade that for knowledge. And if, if anybody on here has heard, um, you know, how to trade a paperclip for a house, go on YouTube and watch this that. video. Amazing. This guy from Canada takes a red paperclip and he keeps trading until he gets a house. And it's really cool because you may think like, I have nothing to give. You do have something to give. It's about, you know, m matching and aligning yourself with other people that need what you have. That would be an accounting nightmare, by the way, to calculate the, to calculate the, the income from every transaction along the way. <laughs> but uh, I really, I really thing, right? <laughs> so uh, can, I, can I jump in? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been doing a lot of these things we've been talking about. It. I started listening to Bigger Pockets in 2016. I met a lot of great people. I'm still in touch with them. Investors are doing just what I want to do. Um, and I've looked up in Orange County. I actually had a fourplex, but it, it didn't end up. It was just such a mess that I didn't end up buying it. Same thing down in Florida. Um, I've been waiting for this for a long time for this market to turn. So I'm really looking forward to finding something that actually makes sense. Um, I'm not seeing any prices change yet. I mean, maybe just me being a wuss and not jumping in, but I didn't see anything that would have made me money yet. Um, but I'm hoping this can uh, be a game changer. What's that? Make offers because yeah. maybe people aren't ready to adjust their price, but they're maybe might be willing to accept it. And that's why I see a lot of my clients are having success making lower offers. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. It's a numbers game. And, you know, I will say that, you know, um, I'm with you when it comes to New York market. I don't even bother with New York because it doesn't align with my goals. So if I calculate where I want to be, you know, 15 years from now, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get there in the New York market. Let's just face it. Maybe other people will and uh, you know, New York will meet their goals, but I, I, I personally, it doesn't personally align with my goals. So I started looking out of state and, you know, other cash flowing markets, New York doesn't cash flow the way that other markets cash flow. So, you know, it, there's no harm in looking, building your network, you know, going to these places. And usually, you know, one of the biggest questions I get, or, you know, is, is how do you choose a market like outside of New York? Choose first three places that you actually want to go. Simple. Then evaluate those markets and find out if people actually want to live there, you know, what the rental market's like, um, you know, and start building your network. And then, you know, from there, things start to fall into place. So that's, that's kind of my um, advice for out-of-state people that are looking to make that jump. <clears throat> Thank you. Michelle. Yes. Have you done anything out of state that was small, not like a big apartment thing? I know you're doing your syndications, but I'm I'm talking about buying a single family or a duplex or something along those lines. Uh no, just when up like just upstate, just upstate, and you know that's that's the the bulk of like smaller stuff. Um, okay. that's within because I've looked to going out of state, and I, I just found I get that it works if you're gonna buy like a 20 unit or a hundred unit place. I understand that then you can attract 
the right contractors and you can afford to do property management and the numbers start to make sense when you're in bulk in that way. Mm -hmm. But I looked into it as far as buying a single family home or a duplex or even up to a quad, uh, all under residential as opposed to commercial. And it, I'm not saying you can't do it. People are doing it, but yeah, it's, um, it's you, challenging. You, you certainly can. I know lots of people who do it. Um, you're, you're not, you're not talking like big money, um, like you are here. Uh, you know, houses are expensive in New York. And so you can actually buy two or three houses, uh, you know, with that down payment money than, than just to one house in New York. And, you know, when we're talking cash flow in New York, if you make a hundred dollar cash flow per month, you're doing great, you know? So, um, mm -hmm. but I, you know, that doesn't really, that doesn't really align with my, my cash flow goals. So if I'm going to put in the effort of buying a house, you know, why not do it in a place where I, you know, when I finish the work by, you know, finding the property, getting it fixed up and, you know, getting renters in there, you know, it, it, I want, I want my effort to count. So that, I guess to me, that just makes sense for other people. They seem to need to drive by their rental property, you know, every day. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't understand that concept, but um, <laughs> uh, that that's important to some people. So for me, I'd rather be as hands-off as possible. I'm a little further north, but we can cash flow a lot better up here. Yeah, you. I agree with you. I absolutely agree with you. In but addition you know, to that, my bigger issue isn't the driving by, because I have no interest in seeing the place, except when I need to see the place. Mm -hmm. But I'm finding that managing contractors and managing handymen and managing uh, realtors, et cetera, it's just... You know, it's a bit more hands-on than I used to think it would be. <laughs> yeah, and you know, just just a side note, you know, being that I live in Westchester, um, and and you know, my investment activities were always around about two-hour drive, two to three-hour drive from me, like upstate. So you know, if you think about that, um, I could almost get on a plane and get to Florida quicker or Indiana quicker than I could <laughs> driving, you know, upstate. So when you think about Ah, uh, you're an hour to Kennedy. You're not kidding me. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, usually, I mean, when I head to Florida, you know, into Tampa, I, you know, I literally get up in the morning, get on the plane, and I'm there by 9 a.m. So it's like easier than driving three hours upstate. Yeah, and Bill, I do know of an investor in California who is building a portfolio of single families and duplexes in Georgia. And she's doing what you do. She will buy something, fix it up. Um, and rent it out and refinance the, you know, as they say in bigger pockets, the burn method. And she's having great success getting her cash back, and she's doing it from California for properties in Georgia. Yeah, she must, she must have a connection somewhere because it's very difficult. I'm having a hard enough time finding people in my county to yeah, send me, uh, send me your email. I know of a wholesaler; they send me listings all the time from Georgia. I know, I find listings pretty every pretty day. I'm, I'm not short on listings. I'm short on good contractors, good handymen people that'll handle things for you. I, I end up, not because I want to, I end up having to take care of stuff myself or babysit people that are doing it. It's uh, it's, yeah, it's the trades, that are, the trades that are let down. Well, I will say this, that again, it's all about building your network. And, you know, just, I, I've had this experience with every single property that's been, you know, outside of my radius. Um, I have found, I have, you know, Home Depot has always been a really great resource for me. And I usually will go up, go to a Home Depot in the local area and hang out for like, I love Home Depot. So, you know, I, I have no problem spending a lot of time there and I'll just meet people that work there. Um, and you find some great people that work at Home Depots and Lowe's. And, you oh. know, I had, I had ordered my countertops, for example, um, from the Catskill location, Home Depot location. And I'm, I made really good friends with the, um, the lady who sold me the countertops. So I said to her, um, do you have any like contractor friends or anyone that you recommend? She was like, girl, I got you. And she took out her sticky note and she wrote down this number in this guy's name. He ended up being the most amazing contact I have ever met. Um, he like, he come, he did my whole bathroom full gut. And then he, um, ended up being my maintenance guy. He still is. And he'll even just drop by the property, like without me even asking him to just to check on it. Like, you know, and every once in a while I'll send him like 50 bucks in the mail just because 
he does it without me having to ask him. And, you know, when I go up there, he always, will, hey, he'll, he, if he's driving by, he says, I see you're, you're here. Can we stop in for a beer? Like great people. And so I think that it's just, it's all about like relationships and just making connections with people. And then again, he was the one who led me to the lady who cleans the house after every tenant. She's absolutely amazing. I've, she's never let me down. Um, that I ha I'm super host uh, on, on Airbnb because of her. And, and, you know, and I take care of them. Like I pay them and I give them what they want, you know, and, and so I've not really had any problems. Good for you. I don't blame you. If you can do it, great. I just find it hard. I've also heard of uh, investors having accountability systems where they'll hear they'll have the contractor takes pictures every day to show the progress. Um, so so if you're not there, if you can't be there, they're you know having ways of and also incentivizing them to complete their contracts on time. Yeah. Um, so guys, you know, we are actually after 9 p.m. So I do want to wrap this up, but you know, we have um, um, Mark and I have a little. Um, program that we want to introduce to each of you. I see we have 35 participants still on the call. So we're going to make this really quick so we can let you guys go. And we appreciate you so much being with us. So go ahead, Mark, let's talk about this. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, um, you know, we're talking about getting the ball rolling and, and get, get, getting over that hump, hump of getting your first or next deal. And, and we all have lots of shared interests and different skill sets. So we're going to get a, a, a group of uh, if you're interested in having an accountability partner, um, Rochelle, you want to talk about, uh, you know, you can probably just send an email to Rochelle and we'll match, we're going to match you and we're going to give you a certain uh, criteria to fill out so we can understand what's best for you, what you're looking for, uh, what your circumstances are. And we're going to hold you accountable um, and we're going to create a program uh, for, for you and your partners to, to, to put your heads together and really really make 2020 something special. So I just sent my email address into the group again, um, write it down. If you are looking for an accountability partner and that could be for simply motivation, maybe you have all of the pieces, but you know, you're just feeling unmotivated and you need someone to just bounce ideas off of. This is for you. Um, there is no charge to being in this. Um, one of the things that Mark and I had discussed, you know, when we had talked about doing this, you know, we're, we're giving our time to kind of pair people and match people up. We're also giving of our network and, you know, we're not really asking for anything in return except for, you know, right now we're in really dire need of, uh, the world is in a lot of, needs a lot of help. So if there is someone in your network that you know of, that uh, might need some help in terms of like a organization um, that's near and dear to your heart. If you can make a small donation to them, doesn't matter what it is or who it is. Um, but you know, we want to use our our platform for the good. So if it's for veterans or if it's for uh, families affected by a coronavirus, maybe it's your local, um, you know, supporting your local town in 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 some way, your chamber of commerce. Um, you name it. You're you're the frontline workers. Uh, you know, just reach out and and you know help you know, give a donation, you know, and, and, and that'll be enough for us. So we just want to, we just want to make sure that we're spreading the love. And, you know, if, if you're still getting a paycheck and you can help, um, that will be just so awesome. So what we want to do is we want to pair you, um, maybe you're looking for, uh, um, you know, a partnership in some way, you know, or connections, um, just, we're going to, you know, send me an email and then we're going to, uh, respond back with a, a survey through survey monkey. We're going to, ask you for some information um, so that we can properly pair you with the right person. How does that sound? I hope everybody um, enjoy tonight's session. Um, shoot me an email, connect with us on social media, and we will see you in two weeks for another session. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful evening. Take, Take care. care.